How's it going guys? Welcome back to Diamond channel or if you're new to me, thank you very much for clicking on this video. I'm Chris Bilton. I was a professional jeweler in the UK for over 20 years, but now I'm living in Japan and I'm not a professional jeweler anymore, but I am making jewelry making instructional videos and putting them on YouTube. So if you're looking to learn to make stuff, um, yeah, you might find this channel useful. So why not click like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, right, today we're just doing a little bit of a more, going back to the polishing motor. I wanna go a bit more in depth on polishing the inside of rings because it is difficult to polish inside of rings uh, perfectly. Um, takes a lot of work. I think it takes more preparation than people realize, especially on a gent's wedding ring, something with a bit of width in platinum. It takes loads of work. You have to spend way more time than you'd imagine uh, at, at the bench, like getting it papered down really smooth before you start polishing. And so for the purposes of demonstration today, I'm gonna to be working on one of my stock pieces, a green tourmaline skull ring. Uh, right, so something wide like that, you, especially in uh, platinum, I always mention platinum as just like being like the hardest to polish metal because it's just so hard wearing. You gotta do so much work to get it like polished, like mirror polish. So say I had like sold this and I wanted to, I had to size it. There's a piece in the back, so it's had a lot of filing. I would be buffing it with like rough, the like say 240 gray paper around the inside. Then I go to this one, which is like 650 or something like that, like medium grade, I would call that. Then definitely I'd be going to this one, which is a 1200. That was actually literally one of those. I just got 1200 paper and I glued uh, a strip of it around the outside. Um, yeah, you gotta do loads of it. And where, where you get kind of caught out, say I go from the rough one, to this medium one, and then I go from the medium one to this one, it might look quite smooth, but if I didn't do enough of that one, um, this, that's just not gonna get the lines out. So you have to do more of that. You go around it once and it looks done, but you have to do more, 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 more than you think. Just it, buff it back more than you can see it doing anything, and then move on to that one. Um, where you get problems is that's, that's going round around the inside. It's only spinning that way, and then, so the lines, very fine lines are going that way. And then you put it on that, and that's only spinning that way. So it's not very good at getting like deep scores out. So if you haven't done enough of that one to get the, the rougher grades smooth, um, you're kind of wasting your time moving on to that one because you're just going round and round it. You won't be getting the deeper lines out with that. Um, so yeah, you've got to do loads, loads of work. So when I first started my apprenticeship, I was given a few tools. And this was one of the tools I was given. It was a, it's a real old school burnisher, but the handle was round. And I used to, I got this like tube of paper, just slide that over the top. And then that was useful to have a round bus stick. So instead of, the, instead of these that only spin that way along the same direction as the shank, this one I can buff across. And that was much more effective at getting like deeper scores out. Um, so yeah. I think it's worth having a round bus stick. I don't use them that often, but sometimes they help you out, uh, especially on, on a wide platinum ring, like gents, gentlemen's wedding rings, usually a bit wider, and they, they're a lot of work to polish nicely inside. <laughs> Before I bought this polishing motor, I'd never used a small unit like this, and <laughs> they're no good. Look, I'm polishing, and that's like outside of the polishing motor, so it's not really catching all the dust that's coming off it. <laughs> so watch out for that. If you want to choose one of these, you save money, but they're not as good as a proper size one. And this has got a dodgy on-off switch, look. Certainly extraction on. And another problem with these small things, they're not very powerful. So they slow down when you push, push hard on them. So my technique for insider rings is uh, put it on a thinner bit where there's a bit of space around it and uh, rotate it round. Maybe move it backwards and forwards a little bit. Turn the ring around. Hit it from the other way. In silver, it's quite quick and easy, I guess. But when you're working in gold, white gold and platinum, be prepared to spend a bit of extra time at the polishing motor. Even after spending extra time prepping it at the bench with fine grades of paper. And don't just do it and then move on. You've got to look at what you've done. Actually study what you're polishing. You may find there's 
there's like a dull spot that's not polished as nicely. Also, if you've got, um, well, I've got a CV stamp in there, and yeah, I've got a hallmark one side. Um, yeah, watch out for that. People, if you're working on a second-hand piece that you've repaired or it's just sized, um, people don't want to lose their hallmarks. Sometimes there's engraving inside old wedding rings. Old married couples have been together 50 years, and the engraving has been inside since those rings were new. So, very sentimental pieces. So you need to be careful with that. So what I have done in the past, when I've had a ring from a customer, and the customer's pointed out that the engraving's really important to them, uh, and it's already faded out quite a lot, I would literally get a black marker pen, so I can see where it is really easily, and just try not to polish it at all. Like, I, at this stage, I mean. So just try not to go over it at all. So then I can see it clearly, there's a black mark there, so I'm just holding the ring away from it, but not rotating it all the way around, only certain sections. And then at the later stages of polishing the inside of the ring, I would just go over it once or twice, just to brighten it up, but it didn't get any wear, really. So anyway, go around it, spin around it, go back to the forwards. You can hit every single part of the inside of the ring. Look at what you're doing, check over it before moving on to the next stage. Let's move on to the next stage then. I think I said in my previous polishing video, I don't like these wooden ended ones. I prefer the plastic inserts. Uh, but on this machine, it's got smaller spindles. They seem to grip on okay here. But on the larger ones, I always found these a little bit troublesome. Like you have to really screw them on and then they might not be straight. So when you spin it, there's a bit of a wobble. It's not very good. But this one, they're working all right. But <laughs> just the polishing mode is a problem. <laughs> I'm doing all my polishing outside of the side. <laughs> So anyway, next one, green. I don't think I ever, I've got red polish, I've got rouge. I don't think I ever use it, polishing. Like, on, on these, on, on the at the next stage I may do sometimes, but on these finger felts, I don't think I ever bother with red. Turn it on, a bit of green on there. It's quite hard, I might have to go that way to get it to stick on there, but usually you just go up and down it once or twice. Then same old, same old really, just make sure you go around it, maybe give it a, a general all the way around and then start really concentrating on, on hitting every spot really well. You can adjust the amount of pressure you're pushing on it. Obviously rings get hot as well, so there's an element of, um, you can't just push it down really hard and spin it low so the whole ring is going to get hot. If you are having trouble with the temperature of a ring, I suggest like a softish kind of bit of leather. Hold it on there, just position it so you can still see it, obviously, for a bit of safety. And you can really polish that without the heat of the ring being a problem. But, but you have to be a bit more careful, perhaps. You don't want that slipping out when you're polishing. So I'll go round it, I'll go round and round hitting every spot and then maybe once or twice really try and push it up so it gets a really strong polish all the way around the inside of the ring simultaneously. These are just little techniques I do. When you polish inside of rings yourself you'll probably come up with your own little ways of doing it. And uh, I just re recommend even though it looks polished all the way around, look closely, maybe try and tilt it a little bit off that corner can be useful. Going across the inside of a um, a wide ring. Also, if they, if you've got a wide wedding ring that's been pushed down, if it was D-shaped, it was flat on the inside and curved on the outside like this. If it's just a wedding ring, if that was pushed down quite a lot, sizing down in the like compression cone of your ring sizer, uh, it might have gone concave slightly. So you may need that corner to go across the center all the way around. Because just hitting it on there flat, it's not going to polish the inside of the ring. So yeah, have a look around it if you're happy with it. Should, after this, should be really quite shiny. Like, some almost acceptable to give back to a customer, like as bright as that. So next stage. Okay, this stuff, cotton wool roll. Get some of this. This is really good for the last stage of uh, polishing inside of rings. Uh, it's also the stage where I said if there was any like really delicate like laser engraving or um, any just old, worn out 
engraving or hallmarks and stuff that's really special to the customer. Um, I would only go over it. I would try to avoid it every other stage because they're quite abrasive, quite severe. Uh, but with this, I'll just go over it gently just to brighten it up. Anyway, I fold it up to like a kind of pad that size. Be careful of your germs. There's people near you, don't do that. Uh, okay, spin it. I've got speed adjustment here, but I understand all not all polishing motors do that. If you have got speed adjustment, maybe do it slower. This is potentially dangerous, do it at your own risk. That's got a little bit of spit on it. You may not even really need to do that, but I do that because it grips onto there much better. Don't do this technique. Don't do this technique if you're wearing uh, like latex gloves or any kind of rubber glove because that glove grips that and uh, you don't want your hand being gripped to it as it goes around. So let me just clarify, this is potentially dangerous, maybe don't do it, but I'm just gonna show you what I do. So that's got a little bit of spit on it, yeah, I just touch it on there. It goes on there like that. Um, with no glove on it, not grippy, so that's why you can get away with doing it. Um, but be careful touching a spinning spindle. Um, yeah, <laughs> feel a little bit hesitant now to put that on camera. So uh, this is yellow. This polish is specific for steel or harder metals, basically harder wearing metals. So I think on the, when you buy it new, it says something about steel on there. I'm sure it does, uh, but works great on platinum. So with that one, it's quite dry. So you have to really, just doing this doesn't really go on there. So you have to sort of go up and down. See that going up and down on it. Now that really brightens it up. And this is a real, a final polishing technique. If you've still got scratches on there, you should not be going onto this stage. This just brightens up an already polished metal. Speed up a bit. Uh, but my techniques are the same. I go around it, backs and forwards. Working around it like that. I can feel it's gone a bit waxy on there now because it's almost like that's got hot. It's like that polish has like melted and really infused or ingrained into that cotton wool. So you can, it feels quite nice on there. But then I like to move it onto a bit where it's not so engraved. So it's almost like wax on, wax off. It's not hard work at this stage. It's quite light work. And uh, yeah, almost even on silver, I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera, you can really see really nicely polished inside now. Where these bits of leather are quite nice as well, uh, as well as being useful for protecting your fingers from the hot jewelry. If someone calls you, you've got to answer a phone or you've got to go and do something to have a customer or whatever, uh, it's nice to have a little soft pad to put your, what you just polished, put it down on that. Um, I don't like putting things on metal when you just polish them. I feel a bit scratchy, don't like it. These can usually be reused. Um, on the polishing motor I had when I worked in London, it had quite big uh, like thread on there. I used to screw off really easily. These would last for ages. On this one, they're quite difficult to unscrew, but basically once you use them, usually you can unscrew them and just put them down gently somewhere. You can use them again. Just try not to squash them when they're not on there. And what I tend to do is like, well, things are in the ultrasonic, I put them in there, I don't like leaving things in too long because you can get like misty patches on there, like the ultrasonic buzz does something to the metal. So it's not good to leave things in too long, especially silver. Um, so while that's in the ultrasonic, it gives me a few minutes to go and wash my hands because you don't want polish all over your fingertips when you're taking freshly ultrasonic jewellery out of the ultrasonic. That's no good because you're just putting polish back on it. <laughs> so. I gave the outside a very light polish because I don't want to wear it out. But obviously the inside is what we're doing. Like, what happens is, like, you can see the inside of the ring, they do quite often look dark. You can tell they're polished, but they're just reflecting themselves. And quite often, something is dark around the ring, it just reflects that. So difficult to show, show what it's doing, it just looks black. <laughs> anyway, I hope you understand, <laughs> that's a polished ring. Uh, so yeah, very light around the outside. If you are, like, just cleaning up stuff, stock and that, don't go mad because you are basically you are wearing out the ring every time you polish it you're making all the sharp bits a bit duller setting edges get a little bit a little bit less over the stone 
uh, a little bit reduced. Uh, so yeah, don't go mad. Like. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope there was some useful information in there for you. Uh, polish the inside of the ring. It's not difficult. It just, I just think it's gonna, to get a really good finish, it's gonna take more work than you might imagine. So just do a bit more at the bench. Go to the smoothest grades paper you got and then do more of that than you would imagine. And then when you're polishing, just do more of every stage, but be careful of wearing the ring out. Look out for hallmarks, engraving and stuff. Just, you have to be careful with it. The ring's probably gonna get hot because you're doing so much work on it. Get a bit of leather. Uh, you can't go too far wrong. It's not difficult, it's nothing complicated or it just takes a bit of attention to detail. Like have a look at what you're doing and uh, be prepared to spend a bit more time on it than you initially thought. But that's basically it. And um, yeah, as usual, I'm calling for new patrons for the channel. Helps the channel grow, supports me, do more. So if you're finding the videos useful, if you feel like I might have some information that could be useful to you, become a patron and then you can just suggest stuff and I'll, if I can easily, I'll hop straight to it. Uh, also, there's a join button now. Oh, at least on a computer and laptops, so there's a join button on the diamond mounter page. Uh, I can't find it on my phone or when I've got an iPad as well. It's not there, so I'm, I'm assuming it's only on, I, um, only on computers and laptops. But yeah, there's a join button now, so you can become a member of the Diamond Matter channel. And it's the same thing as Patreon, really. You just get all the same perks and benefits. And uh, yeah, and you're, and you're contributing to helping the channel grow. So it's still early days, just went over 6,000 subscribers, so thanks to all the subscribers. Uh, that's a great feeling. Um, I still feel like I've got a lot of potential to do a lot more and grow the channel more, because I'm still only just scratching the surface of what I'm capable of teaching. People are asking for me to do uh, more on gold. Got some gold up there, a little bit, so I'm gonna melt that together. Uh, platinum as well. We'll be doing some platinum videos soon. So, um, so yeah, just moving forward with the channel. So I've got to say thank you to the new patrons and members. I've got one new patron since the last video. That's uh, the Delta Dot. So thank you, Delta Dot, uh, helping the channel grow, contribute into uh, to moving forward. Um, the first YouTube members. So uh, it's only just gone live, yeah. So these are the the first guys. Um, got Michael Horan, Daniel Keys, A Guzman, Larry Lime. Leslie Van Gills, Vera Mayer, Mariana Rolando Jura, great name, and then Birdie39. I know Birdie39 is, that's me for my other account. <laughs> I was my first YouTube member, so I wanted to uh, like test it out, see how it all works. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you guys. Uh, yeah, as always, like I really appreciate everyone who's helping helping me do more, because uh, I'm enjoying doing it, so it's, a, it's an honor to be able to, to be in this position where, where I can like, share what I've learned over the years and then help other people continue their skill as well. So it's really, really uh, nice feeling. Um, so yeah, thank you very much to everyone. Um, if you haven't done so already, if you're new to the channel, click like and subscribe for the algorithms. Helps it grow, helps YouTube understand that it's uh, valuable content and should show more people. And um, yeah, join me again for next time. See you later, bye.